Hi guys, part six, who knew, uh, of our playlist. So uh, this is, we are gonna be removing cards from the dealer and placing them in the hands of a player. Now, last time we we did remove, well, we did swap the, the cards around, we had at least added things, but visually we didn't remove anything. So that's what we're gonna do uh, in this episode. Um, and we're gonna dive straight into the code, just right after the fade. What we want to do when we remove a card from the deck is we actually want to remove its physical represent well not its physical representation, its its visual representation. So actually if we just uh, go back here for a second. Um, when I click on hit me, the cards don't disappear from this deck down here, which is uh, not very good because it means that we now have double the, the cards that we started with because we now have duplicate queen of hearts, um, five of spades and so on. So what I'm going to do is, there's this internal list here of uh, fetch cards. I'm going to change this to a dictionary and I'll tell you why. Because I want to reference this um, uh, this here. Uh, and I also want to create um, a sort of mini observer pattern. Um, and, and all it is is just an event that, that fires and, and lets any subscribers know that... Um, the card has been removed and then we're going to remove the the game object from the scene so first things first let's let's rework this code just now and change it from being a list int to being a dictionary int and then game object and the reason why it's a game object is if we actually scroll down to the code here you see that we we add our fetched cards uh, down the bottom and it adds a it adds our card index which is an integer so we want to actually have the integer and the the cart the game object that we create up here. So what I'm going to do is change this to dictionary, and that is going to hold a game object as well. And then everywhere we see our the the list, we're now going to have to change that to a dictionary game object. Okay, so so far we have. Line 9 changed and we have line 18 changed. Okay, so that's where we declare our fetch cards variable uh, and this is where we initialize it uh, to our dictionary. And you'll see that we now have a, an error down here that says contains card index. We're going to change that to contains key uh, because that's the, the method that a dictionary has got that says, do I have this integer? Um, now, just for those of you who don't know how dictionaries work, this is your key value. So much like a, a lookup value, so if you get an, an electricity bill or some kind of other utility bill, uh, it'll say your customer ID. Customer ID is the key that unlocks your record in the database. Uh, and this is the record that we're referencing here. So we have a key of int, which is our card index. And then we have game object, which is the, the instantiation of the card that we create further down in the code. Uh, and so we go down to here and we see add card and you see add card card index. Well, it's actually looking for two values now, the key and the value. And the value we're going to create here is card copy. Because it is the game object that we create from our card prefab. If, this is, if you're not following this, sorry, um, um, go and have a look at the, the other uh, videos in this, this uh, playlist. Uh, and you'll see how we actually create the card prefab and, and so on. It's all explained in those videos. Okay, uh, so when we run this, um, nothing should have changed. It, it should just work the, the same way that it's always worked. And when you click on hit me, it does exactly the same thing. Perfect. We, did, we didn't want to change anything there. So uh, that's all the changes that we're going to make to this, this one for just now. So card stack. Um, again, we're going to do this this sort of cheap and cheerful way. We're actually going to create a event um, uh, on card stack that will tell the uh, observer, the, the, the class that's interested in, in these events, that something has changed. So in order to do that, we're going to have to create another script. So that script is going to be called, oops, dear, a uh, bit clumsy with the, uh, the old clicking there. So we're going to create a class and our class is going to be called um, card removed delegate now it doesn't really matter what you call this but i'm going to call it card remove delegate because i want to to, to sort of see 
what this class what this file contains uh, before I before I click it um, because we're actually going to remove this uh, here the card remove delegate because uh, we don't actually need it and we're going to get rid of the namespace as well uh, and we're going to create a, a an actual delegate so the declaration for a delegate is public um, delegate void uh, and we are going to call this card removed event and blur object sender and we're going to call this card removed event args now when you save this you'll see that it says that this is a squiggly because this card has this class has not been created easy way to fix that uh, generate class oh. where did it generate that uh, over here sorry uh, and this has generated our class for us so if we press F12 or we just double click this file over here so again I'm going to clean this up I'm going to remove all these references here and I always like to add this for no other reason than my own personal enjoyment of writing the word public in front of the word class. Uh, now, event card event remove args is actually derived from a system object called event args, and we're going to come back to that in just a second. But I want to explain what delegates are. Uh, delete that one there for wherever that is. Uh, actually, if you go to organize usings and then remove remove unused usings, uh, that'll get rid of everything. So. Uh, so what this, uh, what a delegate is, is um, without going into too much detail, it allows one or more classes to get an event that is fired from uh, a, a sender class. So if you make, like for example, if you add an item to a list, you might want to have an event called on item added, and if you have, um, um, you know, a the, the same can be done if you want to remove an item from the list, so you could have an on item removed. Um, it's quite common to have these kind of things, especially if you're using WPF. WPF is quite a lot of these on something happened type event handlers, uh, especially there's an observable, oh, I can't remember what it's called now, observable list class, I think it is, or observable collection, maybe observable collection. Anyway, uh, it, it it contains all these kind of these kind of things. So that's what we're going to do is we're going to build a system that allows our card view, which is over here, our card stack view, to get information and get a, a, a signal that something has been removed, and then we can remove that card from from the, from the visual sphere, if you like. So back to our card removed event args. So this is only going to contain one item, uh, well one property, and the it's going to be an integer and it's going to be called card index. I'm going to set it to be get private set. Super simple class, this one. Um, I, and again, I'm, I'm more of the sort of um, the advocate of smaller classes, make sure your code easier to, to debug. Um, other people have other ideas, but that's that's what I like. I like smaller classes, and this is perfect. It's eleven lines of code, uh, and you know there's what eight lines of the class itself. So this is a perfect example of a very very small class. So we have our our public property, and we have our constructor, and the constructor is just going to set the card index. Oops, always watch out for this. Uh, you'll get a warning about this, saying it's assigning it to the same variable. Uh, I actually wanted this card index, but it's giving me the capital card index. So just watch out for that. Uh, so all we're doing is we're, we're assigning this card index to here, and then we're done. Uh, so our card remove delegate is finally done. And so we just go back to card stack now. So card stack is now going to have a public event. And our event, you need to give a, an event an event type, and that's what we've created there, which is our card removed um, handler. 
So uh, we would do public event card removed event handler. And we'll just call this card removed. That's all. So now we have a public event called card removed. So if we go down to pop, you'll see that we have cards removed at zero, temp, and all this kind of stuff down here. So we will do um, a delegate, although there are multiple, although you can have multiple uh, um, subscribers to your event, uh, the delegate itself can actually be set to null if no subscribers are, are, uh, are set. So it's actually a good test to do. Uh, in fact, I would encourage you always to do this test. So if card removed, now you notice as well that card removed has got a little lightning strike. That means it's an event. Uh, and you can say not equal to null. And then we just call it like we would do a regular method. So the object sender is going to be this instance. And our card removed event args is going to be new card removed event args and temp. So temp is taken from the first, the zeroth index on the, in our array. We remove that item from our cards array. We then fire a message to any subscriber saying, hey, I've removed this card. And then we return temp. Okay. So that's all we need to do for card stack. So in our card stack view, what we want to do is we now want to add an event handler in here. Now the event handler will then run code that um, updates various values in here. So, uh, or in in our case, it doesn't update values. It actually just removes a value from the data from the the uh, the dictionary up here. So we know that we have an instance of our deck here. So if we do deck dot card removed, so now there's our event there. Plus equals, and then we press tab, and then we press tab again. And you'll see that deck removed plus equals deck card removed. In in C the plus equals operator is overloaded for um, event uh, for delegates because what you're doing is you're adding to it and then reassigning that value. If we did equals, then that would basically overwrite everybody else, and that that's the sort of thinking that we're they were going with. Uh, so that's why we overload the plus equals operator. Okay. So in our event handler, our deck card removed event handler, all we're going to do is we're going to remove that card from the fetch number of cards. So fetch cards up here. So if fetch cards contains key e dot card index, so the card index of the card that was removed, fetch cards dot remove, and then we specify the key, which is card index. And that is all that we do there. So when we run this, hopefully, fingers crossed, we will remove some cards. Okay, so 10 of clubs is there. So hopefully this will remove the 10 of clubs and move up to the player stack. And it didn't. So we have to do some debugging because that's what happens when you write some shoddy code. Okay, so last count not equal to card count. I think that is a actually, no, I think we're okay. I think the problem is I think the problem is we're not actually <laughs> removing the object. Um, so we need to remove that from there, but we also need to uh, delete the the instance that we're doing there. So if we do destroy 
uh, and it will be this is going to be a bit crazy this one so we want to destroy the game object that this contains so we want to destroy fetch cards e dot card index so this is our dictionary this is our key value and to access the actual value you use the square brackets and we're going to call this method here called destroy uh, and destroy takes a game object or component uh, and removes it from the scene so that's what we want to do we want to destroy that and then finally we want to remove that card from our internal list well our internal dictionary this time of fetch cards so we run this and now so we get the Queen of Hearts and now we have the cards disappearing from the deck and appearing in the player's hand and we can keep going and keep going and keep going and keep going and keep going until eventually we run out of cards and uh, the game will break eventually okay so that's that sorted out so uh, our event handler checks to see if we have the card index now that's just an uh, probably a redundant if check because uh, we should have that card because these should be in sync but should is a big word in computer science so let's not make any assumptions and let's just check it anyway um, so if it does contain that key we're going to destroy the game object because remember our fetch cards now contains a dictionary which is an integer and game object key value pair so we're going to destroy the game object at that index and then we're going to remove that index so that we don't ever reference it again and we added our event handler in our start method and our start method was just deck.cardremove plus equals and then our, the name of our event handler which is just down here so everything looks okay the only thing I can think of is if I look at dealer maybe we can tweak this a little bit so the card offset is currently 0 0.2 now 0 0.2 has all this exposed. Now we don't really want the card dealer to be exposed that much. We actually want them to be hidden. So we know that it works now and we, we can click away and do all that kind of stuff and we, we know that this, this works. So the next one that appears up here will be the Three of Diamonds, the next one that appears here will be the Jack of Spades and so on. So we know that this works. What I want to do though is I want to move this further in so it actually looks like a deck of cards and I want to have it so that it is uh, the uh, the face is down because obviously the dealer doesn't show you the cards that are coming up next or else everyone would be a winner so it's part of the charm so if we change that to uh, let's try 0 0.1 so I'm in the dealer and this is our card stack view so if I change that to 0 0.1 what does that mean for our cards? Okay, it kind of brings them in a little bit closer. Let's make it 0 0.05. Okay, that's looking more like a deck of cards. What if we made it 0 0.05? Sorry, 0 0.05. Would that make it even more of a stack of cards? Ooh, that looks a lot better. I like that. So when I actually click on click me, you'll see that it starts to sort of move like that till eventually, there you go, till eventually everything's uh, hidden. Okay, so there's another couple of things we need to think about here. So the dealer stack, the stack view, uh, it is currently showing all the cards face up so we want to be able to not show the cards all face up so we have our public float for the start the card offset and we will do a public bull face down 
So if this is true, we will keep the cards face down. Otherwise, we will keep the cards. We will put the cards face up. So the good thing is that this is on a per hand basis. So this won't affect our player's hand, who will always get to see their cards. Or else it's not very fair for the player because they'll be like, oh, um, hit. So not a good idea. So we're face down here. So when we add a card, we go down here and it says toggle face true. So we will change that instead to toggle face, not face down. Um, actually, let's make that face up equals false. Thinking on my hoof. Thinking on the hoof. Thinking, thinking I should probably get a thesaurus or, yeah. Um, okay, I think face up equals false. So we default it to false for all instances. Uh, and then if we want to make it true, we just flip that to be true. Uh, okay, so change that to face up and then down here, change that to toggle face, face up. Now, why did I do that? I did it because it scans better in English. There's, there's, a, there's a Simpsons cartoon, uh, and it's uh, uh, the, the episode of it is the one with uh, Ernest Borgnine, uh, and uh, Bart goes on a sort of outward bounds course, and he has to learn the, the 10 things about knife safety, and it's don't do what Donny don't does. So try and make it easy for you to when you're scanning the line. So when you look at this and say card model dot toggle face face up, you can say okay. So when face up is true, that's fine. But if I had it as not face down, then it, it just toggle face not face. It just doesn't scan very well. So think about variable names when you're you're writing your code to see what what the most obvious use case is. And in other words, how how the programmer how other programmers are going to use your code. Uh, and you know, just try and figure out a better way to do it. But anyway, um, so yeah, so we'll keep that as face up. So if we go now down to uh, our dealer, our dealer should have face up as false, which is fine. So we now we need to change our player because we have to have that as face up. And I'll save the scene. So now when we run this, now we have cards neatly stacked one on top of the other and we click on hit me and we see that the cards are shown in the right order. Now the other thing I've noticed is uh, these cards are the other way around which is not good so we're gonna have to look at um, how we can get these cards to show with the first card on top of every other card so that when the first card is removed um, the pack isn't depleted the the opposite way because it actually looks like we're taking from the bottom I don't know if that, that makes sense to you but it does look like we're kind of taking from the bottom there so I'm gonna leave that for uh, the next video um, I think that's probably a good place to stop Hi guys, thanks for watching. If you liked the video, then uh, like the, the that one there. If you didn't like the video, then that one there. If you didn't like the video, uh, I'd appreciate a comment. Uh, keep them clean. Um, and if you want timely reminders, uh, then you can hit the subscribe button just down there in that corner there. Um, thanks again for watching, and uh, I'll see you next time where we are going to be talking about moving the, switching the decks and, and how they stack up and, and all that kind of stuff. So until then, thanks very much for watching. Catch you next time.